This episode is brought to you by Mind Happy. We all spend way too much time in front of our screens. I know I do. And I find myself craving creative yet restful analog activity. I never thought I would long for the downtime of my childhood in the 90s making friendship bracelets at summer camp. This is why we were so excited when we discovered Mind Happy. Mind Happy is a lifestyle and wellness brand centered on thoughtful creativity to help people craft fulfilling moments, connections, and self-care rituals through purposeful play. Mind Happy provides curated monthly deliveries that promote phone-free activities like knitting, coloring, and crafting. Each delivery provides everything you need to explore new hobbies, promote mindfulness, and foster togetherness. They believe that play is one of the most effective ways to relax and re-energize in our daily lives. Mind Happy's founder is an ex-Amazon executive who leveraged similar activities to alleviate her own burnout. It takes a creative approach to mental health through psychology-backed activities, sparking everyday inspiration and joy, and all activities are selected based on science, restoring mental clarity, energizing connections, reducing anxiety, and facilitating fulfilling moments. Think of it as a curated monthly self-care delivered to your door. We also love that products from each box are primarily sourced from small women-owned businesses, and they can be tailored towards individual discovery or shared group activities. Perfect for a small dinner party. For 15% off your first month subscription, go to mindhappy.com. That's M-I-N-D-H-A-P-P-Y.com and use code COURAGE15 at checkout. wellness. My name is Erica Stein. And I'm Allie French. And this is a podcast about individual journeys within wellness and how to navigate it all. After Allie experienced a cancer diagnosis in her 20s, and Erica went through a self-love journey, we created a platform to interview real people from all walks of life that have combined all types of practices. From physical wellness to emotional and spiritual, we hear courageous stories and focus on why it's important to share them. We are both certified integrative nutrition health coaches and together with our community are learning to live our most purposeful lives by sharing one courageous story at a time. It takes courage to share these journeys and by talking about them, we aim to destigmatize the process. We want you to be your own health advocate, feel educated and informed on the latest in health and wellness, and empower you to feel your absolute best. And because we want to bring forth a wide variety of stories, the opinions of our guests do not necessarily reflect our own, but we hope the diverse and varied stories will empower you to make the best choices for your own life. So join us as we and our community share our courageous wellness. Welcome everyone to this bonus episode of the Courageous Wellness Podcast. Allie and I want to hop on and do more solos, more bonuses. So look out for that in the upcoming months. But we're going to talk today a little bit. We're going to do our weekly updates. We're going to talk. We just got back from Expo West a couple weeks ago. So we're going to talk about our favorite new products, some trends that we saw in wellness, and then kind of conclude with a little wellness in the news. Segment. Yeah, the dark side of wellness. The dark side of Which wellness. definitely exists. Um, I feel like we've done an episode on that before, but it might be time for another one. It might be. And it seems to be what's timely in the news at the moment. So, you know, everybody we thought we'd talk about it. Yeah. And yes. here's Allie. So, should we start with our weekly updates as we do on every Sure. Episode? Let's do it. And then we'll get into expo stuff. Um, my update this week is we just had the eclipse. So I'm going to give a little astro update and some astro tea for our astro girlies like me and, you know, baby astro girlies like you, Allie. But basically we just had on Monday, the 25th, we had a full moon lunar eclipse in Libra and on April 8th, Allie's my birthday, birthday, we're going to have a new moon eclipse in Aries. And Wait, so I thought it was um a solar eclipse. A solar eclipse. Thank you. See? Okay. Yes. I do pay sol- attention a little bit. <laughs> solar new moon eclipse in Aries just had the full moon lunar eclipse in yeah. Libra. Libra. And so if you are, we're all being affected by the energy, but if you are a Libra, Aries, Capricorn, or Cancer, the cardinal signs, you're going to feel it a little extra, especially if you are a Libra or an Aries. 
like Allie like and I, like us, we're going to feel it extra. And the eclipse season, you know, it's a, it, the next couple of weeks, we're really going to feel it because we have this full moon eclipse we just had. We're going to have a new moon eclipse and then eclipse season will come back in um, September, October again. So it's kind of mm-hmm. a six month cycle. But, I have a quick um, question. Sorry. Mm-hmm. If I'm like going to be the the listener. <laughs> no, this. please. So what exactly are we feeling? Because I feel like there's everybody's always like Bruce for eclipse season. And frankly, like thus far, and I'm an Aries, I've been like feeling okay. Yes. So what I've learned from my astrologer, who's also been on this show, Lauren, the modern astrologer is not every eclipse season is going to be intense because so I don't know, you can think back to the last eclipse season we just had was in October. So if you think back to where you were in October, either you're building on those themes or if October was a particularly tough time for you, Mm -hmm. you might have a lighter eclipse season this round. So it's not always so intense, but what eclipse season is, is so it's when the moon hits the nodes. So in astrology, little astrology intro here from my understanding, and I'm not a real astrologer, y'all. So if I'm wrong, if real astrologers are listening, I apologize. But from my understanding, every 18 months, the nodes change. And what the nodes are is their karmic placements in the sky. So the north node is like a car- where we're supposed to go. And the south node is what we're supposed to leave behind. And they change every 18 months. And that is what the eclipse are in. So the nodes right now until I think about January or February of next year are in Aries North Node, Libra South Node. Okay. So collectively, we're all supposed to be going towards Aries themes, right? Which is think about like a high vibe Aries, caring about yourself, being your best boss self, you know, (laughs) just like leading the way, but also, you know, caring about others at the same time, but definitely a more prioritizing of your needs and self and moving away from South Node, low vibe Libra energy, which is people pleasing, putting too much emphasis on relationships and no emphasis on yourself. Mm. So a lot of collective themes could be around relationships, people pleasing, letting go of things that aren't serving us. And then, which we won't go into in this conversation because it's too deep. But if you're interested, you can DM us or Lauren has moon events twice a month, which are amazing. But everybody will also be hit in a different area of their their, yeah of their house depending on where so the collective energy is we're moving to Aries themes and moving away from low vibe Libra themes and I always think the high vibe of a sign incorporates the sister sign so to me a high vibe Aries puts themselves first but also cares about other people right so right and like a high vibe Libra cares about other people but also puts themselves first too right you don't have to sacrifice one or the other. So that's collectively what we're experiencing this year. Next year, it'll be in Pisces, North Node, Virgo, South Node. That's my nodal return personally. That's where my nodes are. Um, So yeah. So, you know, for me this week, that was a long intro into the update, but the background of eclipse season is, you know, it's like a little bit of a, I've been feeling like a little heavier of an energy, nothing too bad. There's a lot of good things happening actually. Mm -hmm. Um, in my life, it's a, it's, it's an art. It's just, it's a good time. And right. There's also some duality with family health that I've talked about on the show before. And so, yeah, just kind of like feeling the feelings and Mercury is also going to go retrograde. Last astro bit of news there is, um, Mercury goes retrograde April 1st through April 25th. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like a doomsday Mercury retrograde person. It's not like just be aware communication may be delayed. There may be some delays during that time, but it's kind of a retrospective reflective time. And it can also bring back opportunities from the past. So Mercury retrograde is all about the past. That's why there's always that joke that, you know, your ex could call you during Mercury retrograde. Right, right, right. Because it's like, past things come up and then it rules mercury rules communication and so okay anyway that's a well, little astro tea astro update but we're in my, it i was gonna say do you want my like connection to it yes so please. my birthday is on the solar eclipse mm-hmm. woo, woo, woo. i won't get to see it it's over like north america but um 
I'll be in Japan, which I'm really excited about. It's my first time back since I lived there. And um, it's been quite a few years. So I think I'm really excited. And um, I was looking for like what to do on my birthday in Japan. And at one of the um, like historic big temples in Tokyo, which has like a big market attached to it, it's called Sensoji. Uh, there's a big spring flower festival and it's called, I, it was so funny. I was like doing research and then it was called the Buddha's birthday. And I was like, oh, it's my birthday though. And so I was like, oh, the Buddha birthday celebration. Let me see more about this. And for those of you that have been listening to the show for a while, you know that Erica and I actually do practice a type of Buddhism, but there's like 40,000 types of Buddhism or something crazy. <laughs> and, um, I looked it up and they think that Shakyamuni, who was like the original Buddha or Siddhartha, there's lots of names for the OG Buddha who came out of India. Um, they think that that was his April 8th was actually his actual birthday. And it's celebrated oh, cool. kind of as like a spring thing throughout Asia in different different times, like throughout April and May in, um, in different countries in Asia. But in Japan, it's on April 8th. And I was like, that's so exciting. So I, there's like a birthday celebration that I get to go to on my birthday in Japan. That is so exciting. And of course, the Buddha's in Aries. And of course. <laughs> I love it. No, that's really cool, Ali. And it's so exciting you're going to go to Japan. For anybody who doesn't know, Ali used to live in Japan. We actually reconnected while in she Japan. was living in yeah. Japan. And that's how we started the show. And we're going to, in April, do a whole... We have a lot of new listeners on the show. So we're going to do like a background on us episode coming out in April. So get excited about that for next month. But yeah, Ali, you used to live in Japan. So it's so exciting. You'll be there uh, for a I couple of weeks in April. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you do if you had an extra hour in your day? Go for a workout, read a book, watch a TV show. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and how to make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. Therapy has helped me tremendously over the years, and it is one of the most important and impactful parts of my toolkit. Therapy empowers you to be the best version of yourself, and it can be beneficial for everyone. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com dot com slash CW pod today to get 10% off your first month. That's better help. H E L P dot com slash CW pod. Now that I'm in my thirties, taking care of my skin has become a big priority in my life. It is our largest organ and how we treat it is important for longevity. In the spirit of self-care, today's sponsor, One Skin, is here to help you simplify your skincare regimen. Founded by four PhDs dedicated to skin longevity, One Skin proves you don't need a complicated routine to achieve better skin. Their topical supplements make it easy to help your skin stay younger and healthier without all the extra steps. The secret, One Skin's proprietary OS1 peptide. It's the first ingredient scientifically proven to reduce the buildup of senescent cells, those notorious zombie cells that contribute to skin aging. Fewer zombie cells mean healthier, younger looking skin with fewer lines and wrinkles, reduced age spots, and a stronger natural barrier, something that's especially important this time of year. Also, I wanted to mention that I personally love the OS1 Shield Protect and Repair SPF 30+. It comes with a tinted option as well, so I don't have to worry about sun damage or putting on any makeup when I am on the run because it gives my face such a blended natural look. One Skin is more than skincare. It's about skin longevity, targeting the root causes of aging to help you look and feel your best at every age. Get started today with 15% off using code CWPOD at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code CWPOD. 
After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. So please support our show and tell them that we sent you. It's time to expect more from your skincare routine. Invest in the health of your skin with One Skin. Yes, I'm definitely looking forward to it. It just feels like a lot's going on on my birthday this year between the eclipse and the Buddha birthday and getting to go Mercury to Japan. Bro- and it's my birthday too. And Mercury, Mercury is retrograde. Ooh. Yes. Um, but it'll be But great. anyway, it's going to be fun. And so I know we have a lot to get to today. So that's just our fun little updates. Um, Expo West. The last few years we've gone, we've done these sort of expo, we call them expo roundups episodes they've always like people have always been really responsive to them so we're gonna do one um we won't make it too long this year but just exploring some of our favorite brands that we found while we were there and also it's so interesting to see sort of themes in the natural foods and wellness space um each year so we'll talk a little bit about the themes and the trends that we've seen this year in particular as well um so should we like just go down our list? Like, just, let's start with our favorite items. We only favorite items. I would say yeah. we have like about five that we've really highlighted. So I can yeah. give you the, the first. Erica can tell you a little bit about it. And some of these were either awarded Nexty awards, which are these big sort of like, you know, recognitions at Expo West, or they were given um, at least nominations. But I understand why. So the first one is sourdough pasta. That was so Guys, good. it's from a brand called Bio Nature, I think is the way you pronounce it. Um, and it's a sister brand of Jovial. If any of you are familiar with Jovial pasta, which is non- Jovial it's gluten-free. Non, yeah, it's gluten-free. non-wheat pasta. It's different. It's made from different grain, um, like lentils, legumes. Brown um, rice and brown cassava. Rice. They're brown rice. There's a few different yeah. It's my favorite. Yeah. But it's all it's all um gluten free. Uh, gluten either free. grains or or legumes. And then but okay, so the sourdough pasta. Obviously it's it is wheat pasta. But holy moly, it's real fermented sourdough pasta like um dough that they must create and sourdough starter. Yeah. Sour real sourdough starter that they use and it tastes super sour, like a sourdough. Um, and it's delicious. Erica and I chowed down. It, it is. It was so, I, so I love pasta. Like, you know, if, if you follow us on Instagram, if you know me, I love pasta. Like I love it. I had bolognese last night. I use jovial all the time. The fact that Allie has chosen a pasta as her top favorite from Expo West says a lot because Allie is not really a pasta girl like you're you're you don't really eat pasta no it's not that I don't love it I mean I am Italian and I'm from New Jersey but I really really am conscientious of my blood sugar and blood sugar balance and pasta is not always you know pasta is like not a complex carbohydrate I mean it's like refined flour so I, I try to avoid it um most of the time I do I do enjoy it from time to time but yes Erica's right I do. I'm very discerning when it comes to enjoying my pasta, but I'm really into sourdough. I love that it's a lower glycemic response. I've tested my own glucose response to it and it's delicious. I mean, yeah, it was great. I mean, this is not sponsored. They are not a sponsor. I'd love them to be a sponsor because it's so good. (laughs) No, it, it, it was delicious. It was both of our favorites. We literally sampled it. We took samples. It's, (gasps) It's so good. So if you are a pasta person, definitely try this sourdough pasta because it it was really good and real ingredients. And, you know, because I love and trust Jovial as a brand mm-hmm. already, it gives me brand trust with this sister product that they are, this sister brand that they have. So, so I'm, Bio um, Nature, I think that's how you pronounce it. Sourdough Excuse pasta. me if I'm butchering it. But and also I genius. believe the founders are Italian too. They're from Italy. Yeah. Yeah, um, so okay. So that was our first favorite. Do you want to go yes. into a second? I could go into maybe a second and third that leads into maybe our first trend. So one of the big trends that we did see was low sugar drink options, right? So we've, 
I'm sure everybody listening has heard Love's Poppy, Olipop, right? These like sodas sodas that are now made healthier, right? So healthier, lower sugar, better ingredient options. And, and I just want to say quick, quick, quick thing. Like as far as these sodas go, because I don't drink soda and I haven't for years, but I do drink on occasion Olipop and Poppy. Poppy's huge now because they got all this funding. You see like Super Bowl commercials with them. But I mean, we're talking the difference between like 40 grams of sugar in a soda and two or 40 grams and five. Like it's night and day difference. And they're actually quite tasty. So I just wanted to say if anybody's interesting, like what's like the real sugar difference? I mean, it's, it's, it's huge. It's huge. And taste wise, like I personally think a root beer poppy tastes identical to a root beer if that's something you enjoy. Um, the cherry limeade poppies are something I keep in my fridge all the time. Love. Um, but these aren't, this isn't poppy that we're about to talk about. The first one, it's a brand called Swoon. That's new to me and Allie that we were introduced to at Expo S and they just redid all of their branding. So if you were introduced to them before, they just went through a whole rebranding experience. And it's so cute. The cans are amazing. And we tried the peach and the half and half. I'm drinking a half and half as we record this. The half and half has zero grams of sugar. Zero. And the peach has two grams of sugar. And to me, the peach taste. So I was as a you know, child of the 90s, you know, a little child tween in the 2000s. I loved peach Snapple so much. Like peach Snapple was a staple in my house. Whenever I could get it, I would choose a peach Snapple. Peach Snapple has a lot of sugar in it. This peach swoon to me tastes just like a peach Snapple. Granted, I have not had Snapple in years, so don't know what it tastes like anymore, but it brought back. I literally am drinking this delicious swoon peach tea with two grams of sugar. And I'm like, it's like I'm drinking a peach Snapple. It was so delicious. I will be purchasing. This will be a staple in my home because I love a fun beverage, especially I know Allie and I have done episodes on this. We've talked about it. Neither of us are big drinkers anymore. We don't really drink and certainly not regularly. If if we're going to have a cocktail or a glass of wine, it's typically social or when we're both out, if that, especially for you, Allie. Mm-hmm. And, but I love a beverage. Like I love the ritual of like a beverage in the afternoon or in the evening. And so I like having functional beverages. And so it was really cool to see it as a trend. Yeah. These low sugar drinks. So I just thought I would share that as I shared the swoon, because that was a really big trend. And Then the third, which just to continue on the drink, and this was really cool. It was a brand called Good Idea, Mm -hmm. and they are blood sugar balancing beverages. Yes. And they're out of, are they out of Sweden? Somewhere in like Scandinavia, I believe. But um, what was really fascinating is they even presented studies that showed the the actual like results of people drinking these beverages right prior to and during a meal and Mm -hmm. the and then testing on a continuous glucose monitor their blood sugar spike and it i think on average reduced it by like at least 10 it was like pretty significant it was like 10 to 25 or something like Mm -hmm. um just from having this drink and it's a combination of amino acids, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not anything. It's not a a vinegar based drink, which vinegar does have that effect as well, but it doesn't have the flavor of a vinegar drink. Yeah. And, and it tastes delicious. Like, um, we, we sampled all the flavors. My favorite was, um, the strawberry, uh, elderflower was Mm -hmm. delicious, but just from drinking this delicious, yummy drink, you are able to lower your blood sugar response when you eat a meal. And so, and we've talked about, you know, there's, there's tons of blood sugar hacks out there, right? If you eat a meal and you go for a 10 minute walk that can reduce 
um, the blood sugar spike. If you have, right, I love an apple cider vinegar mocktail. We've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Just the act of having any vinegar before uh, a meal can lower the blood sugar spike. But to me, it was just a genius idea to put these amino acids together to create a delicious functional beverage that reduces your blood sugar spike. Yeah. Genius. Genius. Absolutely. And, and they are was, out of Sweden. I just looked at that. Yeah. And, but they are in stores in the U S so, you know, actually we we're hoping to do an episode with, um, with good idea because I, I find it to be so interesting. And so hopefully we'll be able to bring you the science behind it soon, but they are in stores, you know, in, uh, throughout the country in Southern California. Um, so yeah, that was called good idea. And to me, it was just, it was tasty. It was functional and it was unique. It was really different. And I thought it, they were just really cool. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, um, okay. So here's, I know we're talking about like how not to spike our blood sugar, but one of our favorite tasty little desserts that we found were, and this goes back to like my palate for all Japanese foods is um, these really tasty gummies, but they're made out of mochi, which is rice-based. And it's called Issei, I think is the brand, I-S-S-E-I. Issei is the way I think it would be pronounced in Japanese. Um, Delicious yuzu mochi gummies. And I mean, just, we just love them. And I'm not a big gummy, like I'm not a big gummy person, but they're not made with gelatin. So again, it's like that mochi, if you've ever had, um, there's so many, like so many candies and desserts in Japan and even some meals, not even like sweets are made with mochi. It's like that rice kind of gooey rice. I don't know. What would you describe it as Erica? Like a gooey yeah, it's like rice. A, it's like a rice treat, <laughs> but yeah. Um, but these are gummies in that form and loved them, met their founder, also a favorite, um, very tasty, if a nice alternative to a gummy bear. And then the last one we'll shout out is, has been a favorite for a little while. Um, probiotic almonds from Sprout Living, our friend and sponsor Sprout Living. Um, but we love these new offerings. They're brand new from them. They have two flavors. One is a, tu- it's a Tuscan truffle, isn't it? Yeah. It's a truffle almond. It's so good. It's so good. It's Italian truffle. That's Italian what it's truffle. Italian, Italian, truffle. Italian truffle. And then the other one is a cheesy one, but it's and dairy, dairy free. free. Mm-hmm. So good. I love the cheesy one too. Um, I, it, and it's, it's, it's a newer product from them. They yep. were, you know, sampling it at Expo West and to me, it is, it's a real food snack. It's probiotic. It's good for your gut. It has protein. It's, it's a 10 out of 10 snack. Like, yes, they sponsor the show. I would not say this. I would say this, even if they didn't, I will be eating these almonds forever. If you are looking for a functional, delicious, real food snack, these almonds are it. And I love that they come individually packaged because I don't love when I just get a big bag of almonds or a big bag of cashews. Yeah. I, I like when they're like portioned out and like snack sizes that you can throw into your bag that you can put take in your on the car. run, take yeah. on the plane. Like, That's what I did. I traveled with them recently. Yeah. It's me too. As I've been going back and forth, you know, my in-laws are in Florida. I always have the almonds with me. So they so were, those, are, those were yeah. kind of our favorites. Those were our you favorites. Know? I will um, say a couple other things if we move into trends and mm-hmm. I could shout out a couple other brands that I I loved and enjoyed. And I just ate one. Now I've been eating them since I was introduced. But I feel like, again, as we mentioned, one of the biggest trends we saw was these low sugar or no sugar functional beverages that kind of almost replicate those childhood sugary drinks, right? Be it a Snapple, be it a root beer or Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I was also seeing that trend with snack foods, be it Mm -hmm. cookies, like cookies. I know, tons of cookies this year. Cookies. And also with like crackers and snacks. So two two to shout out is, um, and to show an example of that, is Simple Mills just launched, um, and Simple Mills is a great brand, real food ingredients, um, 
a lot of gluten and dairy free options as well, if not all gluten and dairy free, but simple meals, all the ingredients are pronounceable. You know them, real food. They released something called Pop Mms. So like Pop M M M. Pop Mms. Pop Mms. Pop Mms. However, <laughs> I should have asked how to pronounce it. Um, in pizza and cheddar flavor, and I have I got samples of the cheddar. It's so delicious. They are like if you liked goldfish back in the day, or actually, Ali and I were just talking about this off camera. Not even back in the day for my bachelorette and wedding people requested in like the car in the party bus all of that it's like be it at code everyone wanted goldfish and I try this was in like 2015 when I got married but I remember eating goldfish and getting the worst heartburn of my life and I have not eaten a goldfish or a cheesy cracker of that type since because I was like, no, these crackers give me heartburn. Pop ums or pop ums cheddar. They tasted like goldfish. No heartburn, of course, because they're real food ingredients. Um they're actually veggie floured baked snack crackers. Um and they're just delicious. They're light, they're airy. They were so good. And there's like again basic pronounceable ingredients in them. But they reminded me of goldfish crackers and then like cookies, right? So cookie dough, cookies, you know, all of that. There were two brands in particular that I think did a really good job. One was a cookie dough brand called Eat Doughy, Mm -hmm. but it's all, you know, uh, pronounceable ingredients. I think it was paleo. It was like maple sugar, coconut sugar um, in the ingredients, but it was so delicious and you could eat it raw or you could bake them into cookies. And we got to sample it both ways. Eat doughy, delicious. And then a female founded brand out of San Francisco called Love and Chew um, made a really delicious chocolate chip chia cookie with seven grams of protein. And so those were some of my favorites. But yeah, just again, that the 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 trend to me, the overarching trend really seemed to be, be it in the functional beverage space, in the snack food space, better options for those like nostalgic yeah childhood snacks or or what were once childhood snacks this episode is sponsored by aqua true we are always looking for ways to make drinking water easier since it's important to stay hydrated and healthy in fact 60 percent of our bodies are made of water but according to extensive research by the environmental working group virtually every home in america has harmful contaminants in its tap water that's why we are so happy to have discovered aqua true aqua true purifiers use a four-stage reverse osmosis purification process and their countertop purifiers work with no installation or plumbing it removes 15 times more contaminants than ordinary pitcher filters and are specifically designed to combat chemicals like PFAS in your water supply, which are found in almost 45% of U.S. tap water. And I'm grateful that AquaTrue is certified to remove those contaminants. They have water purifiers to fit every type of home, from installation-free countertop purifiers to high-capacity under-sink options. They even have a Wi-Fi-connected purifier and mineral boost options. The filters are also affordable and long lasting. No changing filters every two to three months because AquaTrue filters last from six months to two years. In addition to drinking water, you can use it for your coffee, tea, and all your cooking needs from boiling pasta or veggies to making stocks and soups. I can truly taste the difference compared with my old water filter, and I was originally introduced to AquaTrue after seeing it in my friend's kitchen, and now even my puppy Layla is drinking AquaTrue water because our animal's health is just as important as our own. AquaTrue was delivered straight to my door, and it was really easy to set up. I was always hesitant about drinking tap water, but I don't have to worry about that anymore because I know my tap water is not just filtered with AquaTrue, it's purified. So if you would like to try it for yourself, AquaTrue comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee and even makes a great gift. Today, our listeners can receive 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. Just go to AquaTrue.com. That's A-Q-U-A-T-R-U dot com and enter code CWPOD at checkout. 
That's 20% off any AquaTrue water purifier when you go to AquaTrue.com and use promo code CWPOD, CWPOD at checkout. I also, that made me think when you were talking about it, um, Catalina Crunch also has a, mm-hmm. um, a snack mix now. They're, mm-hmm. usually, they're usually doing um, cereals, but they've moved into like the snack. It almost rivals sort of like, um, it's a keto version of like Chex, Chex Mix, basically, mm-hmm. or, you know, how you would put a Chex Mix snack mix together. So yes, that's, that was very popular. Um, we also, there's a huge non-alcoholic beverage contingent that 100%. continues, mm-hmm. um, becoming more and more, uh, trendy. There was a whole like room de- dedicated to it in, at Expo. Um, and what else? I think, um, green powders to oh, greens. Yes, green greens powders. powders. And then, then, Oh, the other thing too is, as Erica mentioned, like protein, um, protein, protein. So added protein into things that you might not normally think of as protein uh, rich items. We just, you know, there's a lot of focus on protein these days as far as trends go. And it's not a bad one. I can get behind that. Um, yeah. So that's no, sort of our wrap up. That's that's kind of what we took away from it this year. Yeah, I will. I'll shout out one more thing. You know, we work with and love BTR Nation so much. They are clean, clean ingredient snack bars, protein bars. And they also have delicious truffle cups in heart shapes, low sugar chocolate truffle cups. And they are launching low sugar candy bars, like literally candy bars. We got to sample them delicious, but low, low sugar and a higher protein protein bar. Yeah. Yeah. uh, If you are a fan of BTR nation, they are truly a snack bar, right? They might, they're not a meal bar. They're They're not a a meal replacement. They have protein. They have adaptogens. They are pretty filling. Like I, I have you know, if I've been on the run and they're all that's in my bag, I don't do this often, but they have been a meal replacement, but they don't have the protein or the nutrients to be a real, a meal replacement. They really are a bridge snack between meals. Um, and they are coming out with a higher protein bar with, you know, their same clean label ethos, no dairy, no gums, no, uh, literally no fillers. There's nothing you can't pronounce in these bars and they taste so good. So yeah, that was just exciting to see from our friends at BTR Nation. But I think that is our our wrap up. That's our wrap up. And the last thing we wanted to touch on today, and we might do a longer episode on this. Again, we have done episodes on the dark side of wellness before. And, um, and actually I think we've talked about this concept of like guruism or like celebrity sold spirituality in wellness before, but in light of recent news um, with both, I've, I've seen articles both on Jay Shetty and Dr. Huberman recently come out that have highlighted um, some, you know, some not so great things or some lack of transparency. And I think with Huberman, it was treatment, especially like misogynistic kind of tendencies and, and behavior. Um, you know, it's interesting. I think like a lot of good can come from shows or education, you know, platforms where people can have access to education and information they might not otherwise have. And I think the problem is that when people, um, idolize or, guruize the person versus just taking segments of information that work for them, things can become complicated and, um, you know, people are human beings. And I think oftentimes it's like when we're being sold something that, um, you know, should be accessible in a way that's not I don't know. I'm kind of like blabbering about it, but it's just this idea. It's like, I think we idolize people or put them on pedestals sometimes because they, they become almost celebrity like, and we do this with celebrities too, but then sort of like 
the dark side, like the other information comes out and it's very disappointing. And I think, you know, just because wellness strives for like pursuit of health or, you know, expanding your education on and access to information, whether it be on connection to self and spirituality or on science and brain health and things like that, you know, we can, um, we can lose sight of the fact that like flawed human beings are also like the hosts of the show. Yeah. And, you know, I will link, we did, we did do an episode on the importance of words and wellness, and we've talked about guruism before and I'll, I'll link those in the show notes if, if you want to listen to those episodes, but I agree that we should do a longer, maybe updated episode on it. But I think that's the thing for me too, where, you know, human beings are human beings and, you know, flawed. We're all flawed. Nobody is perfect, but I've always had a hard time. And maybe it's because I grew up in a Buddhist practice that's always been free, always been accessible, doesn't have gurus or idols. We don't have priests or temples in the, you know, Buddhism we practice. And I always would get a weird feeling when people become the guru, even if they say they're not right. I think selling enlightenment has always rubbed me the wrong way because Mm -hmm. I fundamentally believe that we all have equal access and should have equal access to quote unquote enlightenment, right? We all should have access to tapping into whatever you want to call it, God, universe, source. We shouldn't have to pay or go through another entity to access that part of ourselves that is just inherent, I believe. And so it's always kind of like been a a weird little red flag for me when people sell or guruize themselves in a spiritual way. Mm -hmm. And even when you see like people spend thousands and thousands of dollars and line up to take pictures with yeah. these people. And it just gives me such an ick. I don't know if it gives anyone else the ick, but I have, you know, spiritual mentors and I could never, like, it literally gives me the ick to think about lining up to take a photo with them. Right. Like, that is such an ick to me and that they would even want that. I don't know. So it's always been a, you know, it doesn't, it, they, there's always stuff that comes out about be it Jay Shetty, be it Tony Robbins, be it, and it's real stuff. And, you know, it's not, it's not to say they're in, you know, I don't, I don't know anything about them. I'm not a follower of, of any of this. It's just when these types of articles come out and they don't even become, I don't even think big mainstream stories because some of these people are, have helped so many people that they're almost too big to fail. But it just reminds me of, you know, it it can be really dangerous. And there's a lot of people that are, you know, susceptible to to things. And I think it's just a reminder whenever these types of articles come out that you do not need anybody but yourself to access wellness, enlightenment, spirituality, whatever it may be. And, you know, that's why I think with our show, we have such a diverse group of people who come on that we agree yeah. with that we might not fully agree with but fundamentally i think you know you are your own guru period yeah and, and anybody you follow should be preaching that and we hope at least with this show you know we present a lot of information with a lot of guests we oftentimes offer our opinions on certain topics and things but like as we say at the top of the show as our intro like take what works for you and leave what doesn't. And like you are your own best advocate for your health and you know you better than anybody else can know you. So if something doesn't resonate with you, like that's okay too. And you can, um, you can leave it and trust and trust yourself in that process. So that's what we hope you get to take away from our show. Um, and yeah, and we'll do more on this again. Yeah, it'll be great. But we hope you enjoyed this little bonus episode. If you try any of these products, let us know, you know, especially like our number one. I can't believe again, sourdough sourdough pasta pasta was was both of our favorites and Allie's favorite just blow literally blows my mind. But um, yeah, we hope you enjoy the episode. We have really great episodes coming out in the upcoming weeks. 
And you can always get in touch at courageouswellness.net. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Courageous Wellness. Tune in every Wednesday for a new episode featuring a different guest each week. Subscribe, rate, and write us a nice review. And you can also follow us on Instagram at Courageous Wellness or get in touch via our website, www.courageouswellness.net, where you can also find additional info about our health coaching services, virtual group events, newsletter, and more. Until next week, I'm Allie. And I'm Erica, and we're Courageous Wellness.